Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are going to be using the Summer Cabins, the Be Still Sentiments Stamps and Dies, and then the uh, Lakeside Builder Set and the At The Lake Stencils. You guys know I am a huge, huge fan of items that are versatile. We invest in these products. Um and want to get the most out of them. So this is a great set you can really use for any season. And today we are going to take this lakeside scene to the winter because uh, that's the season that I'm in anyway. I don't know about y'all, but I'm definitely in it. Um, so basically I wanted to build my cabin first. Uh, so I pulled out what I thought was all the pieces. I actually ended up missing one of the window pieces, but here what I'm doing is I'm just figuring out my color scheme. You can absolutely do this with just solid colored cardstock, but I wanted all of my stuff to be matchy matchy. You know how I am. And so I decided I was going to do my lake house, this uncharted mariner, and then all of my accents were going to be in browns, um, so that it would have like a cabiny feel, but wouldn't all be just brown. Plus, I love a blue house. I love a blue anything. Let's be honest. So here, I am actually going to end up cutting out the base of this cabin twice because the chimney and the porch are also included, and I wanted them to be brown, but I wanted the base of my house to be blue. So from there, they have a uh, detail layer that is the roof and the sides of the house. For that, I'm using ground espresso. And then for everything else, I'm going to be using brushed corduroy. I wasn't sure about the trim on the house or the stone, like what colors I was going to do those. Um, so I decided to do them in the brushed corduroy because I knew if I wanted to make them darker, it would be super easy to do with a Copic marker. So um, that was a pretty easy decision for me, and I ended up leaving the stone lighter and the trim darker. Um, but yeah, you can I, you can totally do this out of colored cardstock. I just like my stuff to be very matchy. I don't. It's an affliction. I have it. I did miss one piece, um, which was the trim for the windows, and I will figure that out once I'm trying to build the whole thing, <laughs> put the whole thing together. So I'm just taping these down. I will run them through my Spellbinders Platinum 6. And then um, I'm also going to, at the same time, cut out that lake scene. You can do this uh, as a A2 size vertical card or horizontal, or you could do a square card. Um, I'm going to do mine horizontal because I wasn't too sad about missing part of the sky. and I But I did want the full scene um, of the mountains and the trees because that's really kind of what's going to draw us into this little scene card, you know, these majestic mountains and the lake and all of that. So I wanted all of that to be included. So while I don't typically lean towards um, horizontal cards, this one to me just made more sense. So I'm going to run that through and then uh, it embosses all of the details, die cuts the sky separate from the mountains, and then, you know, you can just piece those back together um, to do your stenciling, which is what I'm going to do. Also, you could color this by hand, like you could, it's all by hand. What are we talking about? We're, we're DIY card makers. Um, but you can do it with markers or colored pencils. The stencils just make it faster and easier. Um, so I did one of these, not the, not the cabin. Here's where I'm figuring out what I need to trim off. So I need to trim off the chimney, which is actually really easy to see because, um, Honeybee does those lovely layers with all that embossed detail, which is really great. Uh, it's super easy to see where the house starts and the chimney ends. So I just trimmed off the chimney and now I'm trimming off the porch. The rest of it doesn't matter because it's going to be covered up, but I'll still have the base of my house as blue with those really pretty embossed details. Then the trim piece will go on and here's, um, well, the, I guess the outline trim piece and then the single trim piece, and then the stonework at the bottom. And I didn't love, like I said, you can see here, it's lighter. I didn't love that. And so I decided I was going to color the trim piece with a Copic. First, I went in with an E29. It was just a little bit too red for the ground espresso. So when I put it on there, I could see right away 
that even though it's hard to tell on camera, it really wasn't a great match. So I went back over it with an E59, which is a little bit more neutral, and that matched much better. Now we're going to be putting snow and stuff on top of this, so is it that big of a deal? Meh, probably not. For the stone, I added just a little bit of shading with an E57. I was very light-handed so that I didn't fill in the cracks. I just kind of hit the tops of the stonework. And then this part, I started doing adding in some shading before I realized that I was missing a piece. You don't need to do that. Here is the piece I was missing, which does the um, trim for the top window and then the bottom three windows. Originally, I was like, oh, maybe I'll do it out of blue. Uh, but ultimately, I decided to do it out of the ground espresso, the darker brown. Um, so I was like, oh, blue, yes, no. And then I was like, no, because then my top window will have blue trim and I wanted to have brown trim. And so I just switched it. It was fine. It was no big deal. And then here are those pieces. There's one single square, like open square, which is obviously for the one at the top, which is a single open square. And then um, the other three are exactly the same pieces to go with those three windows. Now it does have little inset pieces. I did not put those in because I'm putting it into a scene and so you'll be able to see my scene straight through the windows um, and that made sense to me. Like if you had windows in the house, you'd be able to see your scenery outside of your window. Um, but you absolutely could fill them in and then maybe just color them like a light blue to reflect the sky color. Or if you wanted to do a night scene, you could color them yellow as if the lights were on in the house. That would be super cute as well. And then I just went through and built this uh, so that way it was done. I could set it aside and I could just work on the stenciling for the background. This, um, what I was going to say was I built this before, but I built it as like a shadow box where there was multiple layers. Um, and that was for, what was that for? My It was for my brother-in-law's birthday. So it was like back in July. Uh, but I really, really thought that this would be super cool as a winter card and it did not disappoint. <laughs> I'm really happy with the way that it came out. Um, I love the color scheme and honestly come, you know, spring or whatever I, when I need another card, these, for me, these could be given to anybody, but they do tend to be a bit more on the masculine side. Really great for uh, masculine birthdays. If you need a sympathy card, I would maybe leave the house off and just use the, the lake side. That would be stunning. Um, but then, of course, you could do them for any, uh, any season. And it, in fact, when this was first released... Um, one of my teammates did it as like a sunset and they did all like the colors of the sunset as if they were reflecting off the water and stuff. That one was really, really something. Um, I'm sure it took them quite a bit of time, but it was beautiful and well worth it. So now my little cabin is built and until we get to the snowing, uh, we're just going to set that aside. I am using my Altenew sticky mat to hold my die cut and my stencils. I had already, like before I even started, I went through all of my distress inks, pulled out all my color combinations, pulled out all my blending brushes. So I was like good to go. I chose to do a more uh, blue greenish. So the salty ocean, but then mermaid lagoon and uncharted mariner. And you guys, if this isn't the prettiest mountain lake color ever. I mean, uh, we might fight about it. The, it is such a beautiful color. Originally, I was like, oh, maybe I'll go with some purples for the mountains. I'm so glad that I didn't because I love the way this one came out. I know that it's a lot of blue, um, but the way that it works with the white of the snow and like the various green colors, I just madly in love with it. Love, love, love it. So, yeah, the but the reason, and I may have told you guys this before, that I chose to do the lakeside one for my brother-in-law's birthday is because they grew up at the lake. Now, like my family didn't do anything like that. Any of the trips that we ever took, like my mom took us on, um, but we would always go to like Florida to see my grandparents or I've been to, to, it was always like to see family. I went to Texas to see my aunt. I've been to Georgia to see my uncle. Like that's pretty much what we what we did. 
Um, just a note on the ink blending, I am ink blending the mountain darkest on the bottom to lightest at the top. And then for the lake, I am ink blending it as if it has a center highlight. So it'll be lightest in the middle and the darker colors will be outside um, on the left and right hand side. I also did this twice. I feel like that gives me the best ink blend. Now, for some of the other areas, I didn't have to do it twice because they're smaller. This is just kind of like the largest expanse um, of stenciling that I will have to do. And then, um, like I said, the, the smaller areas, you can pretty much get really, really good coverage uh, without having to do it two times. So for the mountain that's in the front, I chose to skip the salty, um, salty, salty ocean, salty ocean. I chose to skip that one and I just did the Mermaid Lagoon and the Uncharted Mariner. Um, you can still see that there is a distinct difference between one mountain and the other. And um, especially once we put the, the snow on. Inadvertently, when I put the snow on, I added like a third mountain, um, which wasn't necessarily my intent, but I do think it looks really cool. So this uh, layer of a stencil has that second mountain, but then it also has the tree trunks. And then just so you know, like as I'm going through them, I do clean them off as I'm going, um, just so that way when I'm done, I can just put them back into... Uh, their packaging, and I don't have to worry about getting ink on everything else. Something else to note is um, I am going to do the snow with a snow marker, uh, which does react with water-based inks. Now, I found a workaround for that, um, but just in case you're like, I want to use a snow marker, but I don't want to have to do the workaround, uh, you may want to use inks that are not water-based. Um, so any any other inks you have that you know would probably work. I chose to do three different greens because I wanted there to be some differentiation. I knew that there was going to be lots of snow going on, but I wanted peaks of other colors as well. So I chose my normal greens, my bright yellow greens, the mowed lawn and the rustic wilderness. Then I chose some super yellow greens, peeled paint and forest moss, and then I went more greenish blue uh, with some evergreen bow and pine needles. Uh, so those are just the, the color combinations that I am using. You definitely could pare that down, uh, but I just like the interest and in the, the contrast amongst the green that, that, that it creates. So these are really easy to line up. This is the only masking that I had to do, and the reason I had to do it is because I wanted the white snow and in order to make sure that my snow stayed pretty pristine, um, I couldn't risk that my greens were going to get into it. So I did have to mask these, which was really not a big deal. Um, this is the uh, evergreen bow and the pine needles. And then once these were done, I am going to take off that stencil and I am going to clean it in between the colors Again, because I am using that white uh, for the snow, I didn't want to risk that there would be any chance I would pick up any of those additional colors so that I would have green snow. Um, you know, snow is supposed to be white unless it is dirty snow. And in this beautiful lakeside scene, we don't want any dirty snow. So just this by itself, like right how it is right now, I'm so loving this. Like I will be doing this color combination again without the snow or less snow. Um, this The snow we're putting on it today looks like a blizzard has just come through there. Um, but then this this is the one that we've cleaned off now. We're putting it back in place. And then I will mask off the top part of it just to make sure, again, I'm not picking up any of that green. Distress ink does stay wet a bit longer. And so I just want to make sure I'm not going to pick up any of that stray color. And then for my snow, I am using a combination of speckled egg and shaded lilac. Uh, you could do one or the other and they would be fine. I just find them to be more interesting when they're layered together. Um, and they cause deeper shadows when layered together. But either one of these colors would be perfectly fine for snow solo. When I'm doing snow scenes that are day scenes and like maybe more fun and whimsical, I tend to lean towards the shaded lilac, but that's just me. You do whatever makes you happy. 
Then the last stencil has the, both the sky and that one last little piece of forest uh, in the background. So I'm going to do the forest first because I already have this piece on my mat. And for that, I just went in. I thought maybe I could just do it with the leftovers on the brush, but that was not dark enough. So I did end up having to get out the uh, darker, like the actual ink pad to make those colors darker. Um, but then I will kind of go back in and fit in my sky so that it's in the right spot. So I'm just going to fit this in. Um, and again, you could do this sky any color that you would like, but I am going to use the stencil. And because I wanted my sky to be lighter, I'm not going to pick up any salty ocean. I'm just going to use what's left on my blending brush to give me a really nice light blue that matches all of the same blues that we already have. And this is our whole scene. And I love it. I love it so much. So now we're going to do a couple of things to make it more wintry. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go in with a white Wink of Stella pen. This is different than the clear. It still puts down glitter, but then it has a more opaque white. Now, my marker or my, yeah, it's a marker, um, was on its last leg and I knew that and I had already ordered another one. So I did have to get out the new one that was kind of waiting in the wings to make this happen. But as this dries, it becomes more opaque and is going to give our lake an icier feel instead of that super vibrant blue like the mountain. I'm also going to use the white to create um, a little bit of sparkle and a little bit of white on my mountains. Even though I know I'm going to go over a lot of those areas with the snow pen, I wanted there to be little peeps of white sticking out underneath the snow. As I'm doing this, if you watch that lake, you can watch it dry and get whiter and whiter. Um, and it's sparkly in real life and it's it's beautiful. Now, I tell you guys all the time <laughs> that everything is a learning experience. Um, and so sometimes when you're creating, you learn things that you didn't know before. So I've used the snow marker before. It is carried in the Honey Bee Shop. It's great. It's super easy for adding snow to little detailed pieces like this. But sometimes I have a little bit of trouble getting it started. When that happens, you can see what I just did there. I have a, it's a glass mat, so it's a non-porous surface. And I just kind of press the nib down, which creates a little bit of a puddle. Then I work from my puddle. So I will just pick up my puddle. I will put it where I want it to be. And then as my pen eventually starts working, I have less and less need for the puddle, but I'm not a product waster, so I still use it, but you get what I'm saying. F first lesson learned, I told you before, I discovered that it reacted with the distress ink. Now, in some of the areas, it was less noticeable than others, but once you have your snow on there, basically you're going to go in and you're going to heat it with a heat tool, and this will cause the ink to puff. The, the snow marker will then puff, it will turn white, but mine was turning a little bit dingy, especially with the brush corduroy because it does have a bit more of a yellow base. Same thing on the trees, like the forest moss ones, those were definitely more yellow. What I discovered was if I went back in and did a second coat, the first one acted like a barrier, and then the second coat was a more true white. It also made my snow fluffier to have two layers. Um, so it didn't bother me to have to do it twice because it is a really quick process. Now, if you do not have a snow marker, how can you add the snow? You could use a clear embossing marker. Um, Versamark has one, uh, Ranger Distress Ink has one, and you could do the same thing. I would recommend that you treat your entire piece with an anti-static tool, go in with your marker, and then you could use embossing powder, uh, a white puff embossing powder the same way. You wouldn't have to do it twice, and it's an alternative to what I'm doing. I really like this snow marker because it makes it nice and easy easy to put down and then, you know, heat it and it puffs and you're done. I did end up, like I said, having to do mine twice in some cases. For the uh, colors where I were more blue, like the evergreen bow or the mountain, it was not even noticeable. 
um, you know, that it picked up any color, it was still a pretty true white. But for these more yellow greens, I definitely had to do it twice to get it to be white, white. Um, so just something to note there. And then I'm just, you do this, you do the heating after it's dry anyway. So, um, it doesn't, you, you can add as much snow as you like and then go back in. Another thing to note with the snow marker specifically, whatever way that you lay it down, um, you're going to be able to see your strokes. So like how I'm doing it twice, when I'm doing it once and then going back in and doing it a second time, it's not going to blend together. Um, like how if you layer, uh, you layer uh, embossing powder and then it'll melt into each other. This is not going to melt into each other. You will have two separate um, layers. So if you don't completely cover your first layer the second time, you will see that there is a difference in the heights. That didn't bother me because realistically with snow, you, not everything is perfectly level in the same height. Um, but you you get what I'm saying. Just something to keep in mind. For the mountain, like I said, I just went in, uh, I created my little snow cap. He's so cute. And then it has like an embossed area on like the lower middle. And this is where I inadvertently created my, my next, my third mountain top. I didn't mean to, I was just trying to add some snow to the side of the mountain. But once it was puffed up, it truly does look like a third mountain, which Honestly, I'm not mad about because it creates a different look than maybe I would be able to get with other seasons and then further stretches that product. Um, so honestly, because, you know, mountains can have snow even in the summertime. Um, so if you wanted to do more of like a summertime feel in the front or a fall feel in the front and then still add snow caps to your mountains, I think that would be perfectly acceptable. And you could still create that kind of third fourth. I'm not sure how many mountains are in here. Uh, but anyway, you could create them. So here you can definitely see the me. I'm having to do those yellow green ones specifically again, especially that one in the background where the forest moss is really, um, it's a really dark there. I, I definitely had to go over that one. It was it was green snow bordering on yellow. And then I also decided to add a little bit of snow to my lake uh, and along the bank of uh, my our little lake area here. This, this snow pen will be great, great, great in the summer for um, doing, what do you call that when the the white caps, that's what I'm talking about, in the water. Like, this will be great for that. Uh, normally, I use puff embossing powder, but now that I have found the snow marker, I may not go back. I don't know. We'll have to see. So that is our snow added in. Now, I don't know if you guys caught it when I was doing it, but as I was heating up my lake, it was, it was making my white zig marker transparent. It was taking out the white. I don't know why that happened, but again, this is something else that like another lesson learned that when it's heated, it it removes the white and just leaves the glitter. Um, so I did have to go back in and do my white again, but it was no big deal. Now from here, really the only thing that I need to add is my cabin and my sentiment. I put my cabin in on the left-hand side here and I did want it to feel more uh, like part of the scene. So I decided to go in with the snow marker and just put like some little snowy banks kind of around it. And again, I did do this twice so I could get the ultimate amount of height that would be even with my house. Um, so yeah, anyway, so my husband grew up at a at a lake house. We we weren't a lake house people. We were barely beach people. We were like family trip people. That's what we were. Um, and he was at the lake house with his family. You know, that's how they started that tradition, which is great. And hopefully one day we will be able to do that for our kids. Now, unfortunately, not at the same lake house. His parents chose to sell their lake house a couple of years ago. They are looking for another one. Um, so hopefully 
hopefully they're able to find something that meets their needs and then, you know, we'll be able to take our kids to grandma and grandpa's lake house so that they could have those same memories that my husband got to make when uh, he was growing up. But um, we will for sure keep taking beach vacations because this girl is a beach girl all the way. Um, So here, just fitting that, like I've uh, mounted the scene onto my card base. Now I'm fitting my uh, sky into that, you know, little open area. It all fits together like a puzzle piece, super easy. And then the last thing that we need is sentiment. This is in the running. I cannot commit because uh, it's too soon. But this is in the running maybe for my husband's birthday card. We'll have to see. Um, so I chose the sentiment that easily could be turned into a birthday sentiment. And it says, wherever the year takes you, may it be happy. Um, I It's hard for me to commit because last year, year before, I didn't make him a birthday card because honestly, I didn't think he really cared. His birthday's in February, by the way. Um, And then he was so upset because (laughs) apparently he's been saving all of them all of these years. Every birthday card I I have made him or anniversary card or whatever, he's been saving them. And so he was disappointed that he didn't get one that was made and I felt terrible. So now I'm like, this one has to be extra specially good because it's being saved forever and ever. I didn't realize we were saving them forever and ever. <laughs> I did, I missed that memo, uh, which is very sweet. And I was, I felt terrible um, disappointing him. So I want to make sure I don't do that this year. So I just did this in white on white with the intention of going in and again, matchy matchy guys, uh, custom coloring the background to match the scene. And so because it's going to go in the area where there is like the blue of the mountains and the blue of the lake. I chose to do the blue, which was um, Mermaid Lagoon and um, a little bit of Uncharted Mariner, uh, just so that it would kind of fit into those areas. I kind of wish I would have went a bit darker in hindsight. It's totally legible, but um, I almost wish that I would have went like the color of the house, just like a true Uncharted Mariner um, there's still time though. I can maybe get in there and, uh, color it. We'll have to see. But I do wish that I had gone a hair darker before I had adhered it. But sometimes, you know how it is when you're making a card, you're like, okay, I'm good with it. And then you walk away for a day and you come back and you're like, oh, I wish I would have X, Y, Z. Or the complete opposite happens, which is you don't love it when you walk away. And then a day goes by and you come back and you're like, oh, well, you're a pretty girl. Like, you turned pretty overnight, really blossomed. Um, So sometimes it is best to walk away. But I was filming, and so I needed to get my card done. And also, I didn't know that later on I was going to wish that I had gone a little bit darker. I was okay with it in the moment. So then, yeah, that's going to go on there. And then that is the whole card. So I hope this inspires you to stretch your supplies, try out different things for different seasons. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.